Hello everyone, today's demo will be a walkthrough through the code that's um, going to support you in uh, delivering your assignment. This is a worked example of how to read files and get the data out of files using JSON. As you can see, I have my main activity um, and it contains a list view and a couple of other things. Let's go and look at the layout for a second. It's, as you can see, it's just a basic layout with a list view. Okay, so to start off, we implement a base adapter. So we implement a new adapter for our, our list. Before we use the array list um, adapter, so the array adapter, <coughs> but now we're going to create our own our custom one because we need to get the data out of a JSON object. A JSON object is a particular format that looks something like this. So we have a JSON object described by two um, curly brackets. And that has a key value pair. So for anything that we want to show, we need a key. So today we're going to discuss about authors and books. So we're going to have an author, an author array. And that's going to have a value of an array. OK? So this is how we describe arrays. Now each of this, these objects, is each of in in this array, will have authors. Okay, so each author. Again, we use an object tag. Each author will have a first name, and then the object can be a string. So, J R R. And then comma, last name, talking, and sorry, that's a colon. And then he'll have another uh, a number of books published. Okay, so we're going to go for Lord of the Rings. So we'll have a, again, a books array. And each of these will have a title. And that title is going to be Lord of the Rings. And also, I'm going to add another book. The Hobbit. Okay, so as you can see, there's a lot of objects nested within arrays, within objects, and so on and so forth. But this describes our layout uh, exactly. And please be careful to have all these if, uh, tags in each of your object. Otherwise, you'll have problems when we're actually running the code and reading the information. So that's how the format looks like. I'm going to leave it in here, comment it out. And as you can see, it starts with an object. So that's why I've declared a JSON object as root. In our authors, we have an array. So I've also declared that for ease of access. <coughs> OK, now that I've described that, we start implementing our, our adapter. Why do we need to implement our adapter? Because we need to get the specific data of the author. So the first name and the last name to be displayed. Here, as you can see, in the get item, I'm returning that as a string. But I'll go on to this, I'll go through this a bit later. 
Okay, a base adapter, a, a, an adapter extended from base adapter needs to implement four major functions. The get count that tells it how many items it has. So in our case, we get it from an array. So we say um, we say the JSON array dot length. And if there is no array passed over, we we need to return zero because we don't have anything. Now, when I say passed passed over, I mean when we create the class. Okay, so we need to also implement a constructor, which in our case takes context and the JSON array that's being passed. As you can see, we have a couple of things declared in this class. We have a context, a JSON array, which holds our data, and a layout inflator. Now, besides creating our own adapter, we created our own class. So we created our own uh, layout. So we had to also get that layout and use it in our code. And that's what the layout inflator does. As you can see, it's just a system service. So layout, it's, we get it from our context and we ask our context to get the system service for us and that's gonna do the inflation. Okay, now back here, as I said, we need to check that the data exists. If it exists, we ask it the length. If not, we return zero, so we still have a functional array. Next, we actually need to get the item from the array. So we, we again check for the data and then get the information from the array. So now, what am I saying here? I'm saying array, get JSON object, because we're using JSON objects, at position i, and then we get the string that's contained in the key first name. And then we add a space here, and we get the last name as well. It's exactly the same thing. And then we return it. Now, if there's a problem when we read the, J when we read the JSON object, <coughs> it will throw out an exception. So, and this is gonna be the JSON exception. So when that does happen, we'll just return a blank line. And because we're, still, we're also asking if the adapter is there, the adapter isn't there, it shouldn't display anything, but we still need to make sure. So we return an empty line here. Get item ID is pretty simple. It's just um, an ID of the row that we're using and we're just gonna return the position. Here it, it's, is where it gets complicated. <coughs> if this is the first time the view gets created, the view passed in this is no. So we have to build it ourselves. Now, in my, um, in my design, I only have a text view, which I'll show you right now. So I have this custom list view cell, which is a linear layout and has a text view that's matched parent on the width has a height of 50 uh, pixels and it has an ID and it's centered vertically. Okay, going back, we use our inflator and we ask it to inflate our view. So to extract the information from the XML and transform it into something that we can use. Here, we have to say which view group it uses, but because this is a adapter that uh, attaching it to the, um, to the root, so to the um, actual list view will be done by list view itself. So we also need to tell it that it shouldn't try to attach it quite yet. Then 
we get from our view, we try to get the ID. So we try to get that text view using our ID. So r.id.textView. And then we use our method that we've just declared. So get item here to get the information and set it to the text. If the view already exists, that means it's already been set up. So we just ask it to uh, transfer the information to the view that we're just creating and return it. OK, so now that we have our class, which, by the way, is inside the other class, so it's only, in, it's only accessible by this class, <coughs> we can start using our application. So here, as you can see, I've created my list view. I've created my adapter, which is an author adapter declared here at the top. OK. And I pass it the authors array. Now we'll come back to the authors array in a second. Also, we set the list view. Uh, we tell the list view to set the adapter to our adapter. We've done this um, in the list view session, so I'm not going to go through through this bit again. But now, before that, we actually need to load up our data from from our file. So, Android offers us the open file input to access files that are, are in its memory, in the application memory. And we're just going to open up a file named books.json. Now the problem is, and you might ask, what happens if the file isn't there? Well, that's what this try and catch does. It makes sure that data is, um, it makes sure that, that the file is there. And if not, it offers an alternative. So in our case, if the file isn't there, this line will be skipped and it will jump here where we just create a JSON object and an array. And also we attach it to the, uh, we attach the array to the JSON object to the root. If it does exist, we just load it up. So let's quickly look through this. So we have our open file input which is a, which returns an input stream reader that we have to create. And also, because the way you access information from a hard disk or a, um, a flash drive, you the input comes in as a stream. So bit by bit, what we want is one big file, one big variable. So that's why we have to buffer the information and store it in a buffer. This whole, the whole data is stored in one line. So actually, all we need to do is tell the reader, tell the buffer reader, to read the, the first line. And that's going to get all our data. And then we create a new JSON object to add it in there. <coughs> Okay. All of these are um, exceptions that need to be handled somehow because JavaScript Java is pedantic. So if something will give out an error, if you don't try, if you don't catch it, it will fail the project. Uh, will fail the application. So it actually forces you to create these before compiling. Otherwise, it gives you errors. So you can't just let it fail. OK. So now that we have our array, which is empty, we can start adding objects. How do we add objects? We create a button in our action, in the, in our action bar. And 
and you've probably seen this from Mark's lecture. So here we have our menu that's, um, that has an XML file describing it, which if I go back to the class, will be mentioned here. So on create options menu, get menu inflate. If you do this, you will have that menu in the corner. If not, if you don't have this method, then you won't. <clears throat> so back to our menu. Here we have one item which has the ID action add. It has the string action add, which just says add. The ordering category doesn't really matter. And also we declare an icon. Anything that starts with Android colon is the default in Android. So we start Android colon drawable IC, which means ice cream. I see menu add. Okay. And we also tell it to show as an action. So it's always there in, in the, in the um, action bar and not as a menu item. <coughs> okay. So that's a quick description of our menu. And now when we click on that menu, so as you can see on options selected, on options item selected will be called. First, we check if the item that we're getting is the right item by querying the item ID. Now, this is this isn't important for this demo. However, it will it's a part of um, if you have more than one, you'll have to differentiate between them. The next thing we're doing now is creating our it's going to we're going to create a alert dialog. An alert dialog is a pop-up that asks you for something like a password or a name and for us we're going to ask for the first name and the last name of the uh, author. So, you can either create this in your layout and use an inflator again to get the information from it. Or this time I want to demonstrate how to create it programmatically. So we create two edit texts called um, edit text first name, so EF name and edit last name. And we tell it to be final because we want to call it later on in one of the functions. And this is important, otherwise we can't call it from, um, from an event otherwise. We create a linear layout. We set that linear layout's orientation to vertical, so we have them one, one underneath another. And we attach the two um, edit texts to our layout. And now we're going to actually build our alert dialog. Now, usually you would, you would create a variable that's of type alert dialog. You would say new alert dialog and then start uh, attaching the, um, the properties. There is a pattern in programming called the builder that may or may not exist in all of the, um, all of these um, <coughs> classes, <coughs> but in this one, in this case, an alert dialog has a builder. So a builder basically, instead of returning the um, a response, actually keeps returning the same object. So in our case, if I say new alert dialog, and I ask it to 
um, use the builder, every time I call one of these methods, instead of returning void or a confirmation that this happened, it actually returns the same object. So it will return this alert dialog over and over again. That's why we can stream and continue to put these properties one after the other. So we said it's title, we said a message, and then we said the, any extra views that it needs. So our two fields, we said, we, and it has two buttons, a positive button and a negative button. Our positive button will be just okay, or you can say add, and that has a on-click listener, which will create a new object in our array, in our JSON array. So what we want is to create a new author, which is just a simple JSON object. And then we put the first name, last name, in the respective keys of that object using the put method. Also, we want to create, to make sure that the books, even though it's empty, has an array. So when we actually call it, it's going to have a standard um, format all the time. Okay, so after we've put these three items, we put the new author in the author's array. And we also, if you remember from last, the last session, we have to notify the adapter that the data set has changed. Okay, so that's why we've declared them um, class properties before. And now we're actually creating our file. If you run this for the first time, this will be the first time that the item is being written. If not, it will overwrite the file, so it will not append. There are different options to append. <coughs> so again, it has the same um, the same style. It has an open file output, so we need to open the file. And this time, it also has a mode. So we want this file to be private. We don't want to create it somewhere else. We don't want any application to access it. I only want it in the memory, in the memory of the application. Other settings that you can use are mode external read world readable, so mode world readable, mode world writable, and also mode append, which is if you want to add the information to the file at the end. And again, it goes through the same pattern. So we open the file, which returns an output stream writer. We have to declare that output stream writer, and we have to use a buffer to get to write the information all at once. And this is just pretty simple. We tell the writer to write. Okay, but what do we write? We write the root object in the form of a string. Now this method also has a parameter if you want to use it, an optional parameter, in which you can display the information in multiple lines. For our case, we don't want to because we're, we're, we're expecting the data to be in one line, but it helps us debug the information if we want to show it to um, the log. We'll just leave it like this, so no parameters. And after we've written something, we need to close it. So next time we want to add something, we can open it again. <laughs> again, with any file operations, it has a couple of exceptions to take into account. And that's all that happens in our on-click dialog. We also have to set a negative button to cancel the action if we want to. But as you can see, even though it needs to respect the on-click listener, it's just an empty on-click. And we also need to show it. So after we've built 
our OER dialog. In the end, we need to show it. Right, so that's a introduction to the demo that will mainly create exactly what you need for your assignment. So now we can actually run it and see how it looks like. So as you can see now, the application is loaded up. We have our button here in, in the action bar, which has a nice icon. And if I hold long on it, it will actually display the text that I've added in the string. But now if I click it, it creates this alert view. Sorry, the alert um, overlay. alert dialog and as you can see it has two fields so I can add a name okay so I have to type it in so J R R to King So it doesn't like me writing stuff. So Tolkien. And then when I press OK, it creates a new item. Now, if I close this application, and when I, when I mean close it, I mean force close it. So I'll go in here in my application, in my running application, and dismiss it. Okay, so that means it's off the memory, it doesn't exist anymore. When I go to open it again, all my data will still be there. Okay, it's not quite there. 